Hi, Mr. Klimberg here, coming to you from my beautiful classroom this evening. And I'm here because I need to show you about manipulating formulas. And I couldn't be with you in class. So, put on your 3D glasses now. What's in your book? Just, just one minute. What do you mean we couldn't afford the 3D? That, it's manipulating formulas, it's boring. It's, you're not gonna like it. Okay, we'll bring out the robotic squid. What do you mean we couldn't get the robotic squid? Okay, so, sorry, no 3D, no robotic squid, just me showing you manipulating formulas. So, the big deal about manipulating formulas is to remember that you have to do something to isolate one variable. You're looking for one variable that you want to get on its own. And whatever is being done to it right now, you have to undo it by doing the opposite operation. So if you're seeing multiplication, do division. If you're seeing addition, do subtraction. And if you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other side. That way what you'll do is you'll isolate that one part of the formula that you're looking for. And if you just kind of do this consistently, slowly, bit by bit, you will get to the right answer. The other thing to keep in mind is try to do bed mass backwards. So start with the addition subtraction, then work into doing multiplication division. Leave any brackets or exponents until pretty much last if you can. I'm going to show you the most famous formula in all of physics just to get you started. And that's the formula V equals D over T. Now, sometimes people will tell me about putting this in the triangle and then they solve it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it because that's good. I don't want you using the triangle. But using this formula uh, with the triangle thing isn't a great idea if you have been using it because most of the formulas don't work that way. So let's not even try it. Let's not even get into it. Instead, I tell you that in this formula, I want you to solve it for D, the displacement. So what I'm looking at is, I want to get D all on its own. What's the one thing being done to D right now? We're dividing it by T, that's it. So, I'm going to multiply by T, because that's the opposite of division. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. T and T, T divided by T, equals 1. It cancels. I don't get rid of it on this side, because it's not cancelling on the other side. This would leave me with the formula TB equals D. As a general rule, and this is just sort of the way that we do things in physics, similar to in math, we don't leave our unknown variable on the right-hand side. So that means that usually what I'll do is I'll just flip this whole thing around now, and I'll write it as D equals TB, like that. So displacement equals time multiplied by velocity. If you want to, or if this is just the way that you wrote it out, if instead you've got vt, it's the same thing. Because when we're multiplying these two variables on the right-hand side, it doesn't matter what order we're multiplying them in. So we've got that formula. Now, if I was instead trying to solve it for t, I usually get people doing a little bit of a mix-up here. Because what they don't remember is t is in the denominator. So that means that I can't just say, oh, I'll divide by d, divide by d. t would still be on the bottom. We ought to move t up first. So this will sound a bit kind of redundant because we just did it. But if I'm solving for t, I'll multiply both sides by t again. These t's cancel. Remember that happened before. So I get something that looks like that. Now what I need to do is still get the V to move over, because I'm trying to isolate T on its own. Divide by V, divide by V. These Vs, divided, V divided by V equals 1, they cancel. And now I've got the formula I need. T equals D over V. Good to go. Now that is the most basic formula out there that you really should have to you know, do some manipulations with. There's another one that I'm hoping you remember from science 10. EK equals 1 half mv squared. If I'm solving this one for, let's say for example, m, I've got a couple of things I've got to move around. Myself, usually, I go after this 1 half part first. I just don't like seeing that there. So if I'm trying to isolate for m, the first thing I'll do on its own to get just this silly fraction out of the way 
multiply both sides by 2. Now I threw this all the way over there, but really it's 2 divided by 2. So that cancels, and it leaves me with that. I still need to get the v squared to move, and sometimes people worry about this. They say, well, I have to square root it now. No. If I'm solving for m, I get to leave v alone. All I have to do is just move it to the other side as one big clump. So divide by v squared, divide by v squared. Over here, v squared divided by v squared cancels. And leaves me with m. 2ek divided by v squared equals m. I'm set. What if, though, we had to solve that same formula for v? If we're doing that, then we do have to be a little bit worried about that v squared. I still get to do the same thing as I'm trying to isolate just v on its own. I still get to do the same thing with the 1 half. I still need to move that. So multiply by 2, multiply by 2, 1 half and 2 cancel. Now I'm going to have to get rid of that m, get that moved to the other side. Divide by m, divide by m, m over m equals 1, so it cancels out. And now the very last stage of this. I can't have v squared. I need just v. Now mathematically, this is a bit of a dangerous thing to do. Your math teacher will tell you, watch out, because you don't know if that's positive or negative v value. In physics, we're going to rig it so that that's not an issue. It's not a problem. Square root. Square root everything. And make sure your square root symbol really dives all the way down and all the way across because you have to show that that entire thing is being square rooted. Otherwise, it's not correct. Over on this side, square root cancels the square, and I'm left with b. Okay? Then there's some that look a little bit weird, maybe because they've got some addition going on in them. This is a formula that we'll be doing in about one week. And this formula looks weird because from the very start, they put down the unknown variable on the left-hand side as vf squared. So if I was going for vf on its own, that's all I've got to do, okay? Just square root everything, and I'm done. That would be solving for vf. If I needed to solve, though, for something like, let's say, a, the acceleration, things are going to look a little bit different. Now remember I told you earlier, try to do bed mass backwards. So I'm going to try to start with the addition and subtraction. Yeah, a is over here with 2 times d. But I'm looking at how right now the term that a is in has vi squared being added to it. We take care of that first. We go ahead and we subtract vi squared. And we subtract it from both sides. Quite often I've seen people write it out this way when they're doing math problems. Same sort of thing for us here. So we've got vf squared minus vi squared, because on this side it's vf squared minus vi squared. This part just cancels. So on the right hand side, all I'm left with is 2ad. Now remember, I'm trying to solve for a, and right now a is being multiplied by 2 and d. So I might as well take care of it all in one shot, it's no worries there. So divide by 2d, divide by 2d. On this side, 2 and 2 cancel, v and d cancel, and nothing's canceling over here, that stuff's just sitting there. I'm going to be left with a new formula that if I flip it around to get my unknown on the left side, is going to say vf squared minus vi squared over 2d. Looks like a big hunk of stuff, I know. Okay? One last one that I'm going to get you to think about a little bit is one of the granddaddies of chapter one. It's one of the most important formulas that we've got. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. It is a monster, and it means that you'd have to move around a lot of stuff. But I can do it if I do it in little pieces. What I want you to try to do is maybe solve this for vi. Solve it for a. See what happens. But then, the weirdest thing in the bunch. Take a look at 
and whether or not you can solve it for t. Some of you that might have done a little bit more math might know that that would involve something called a quadratic. And what I can tell you is that in Physics 20, we will not ask you to do questions with quadratic, so you don't have to worry about that. Instead, we're always going to rig this formula so that if you need to solve for t, there's going to be something else happening that lets things cancel. We're going to see what happens with that when you start Chapter 1. But for the time being, you know, try manipulating this, solving it for the other variables, see what happens. The other thing that's always a good idea to do is take any of the formulas from the data sheet and just manipulate them for every other variable and see if you can get them done. If you want to try that and come into like one of the general help PDT sessions, I'll look through them with you and I'll tell you whether or not you can manipulate them right. Even try some of the Physics 31s from the data sheet that are formulas that we're not even trying in this course yet. It's good practice. So I'll see you tomorrow. Have fun. Bye-bye.